what I want to talk about now is any type of spike or point driven tool. So I want you to understand the difference between point impactive and point driven, right? So point impactive would be something like I talked about before using a pocket stick, a massage stick as an example. So this is a massage stick, right? So the idea of it is it's pointed enough to, if struck into a large muscle group, to disrupt the tissue. It will create a penetrative strike in as much as it will split the muscle and create bruising, but it won't penetrate the skin. So think about that the same way in the roundedness of a marker pen or the roundedness of a flashlight, a handheld flashlight. It's got a rounded edge that will, if it hits muscle, split the muscle fibers. It's not going to penetrate the skin. If it will hit bones and joints, it will crack and break joints, but it's not going to penetrate the skin. Conversely, um, so this would be a point impactive device. It will con allow you to concentrate a lot of force onto a small area. Conversely, a point driven tool. So think now along the lines of a screwdriver um, or a pen. A pen, sorry, this kind of pen. If you're going to use a pen, don't bother with any of the monstrous looking tactical pens. Just go nondescript. But what you are looking for is a solid cylindrical shape. So not something that joins in the middle, but one piece, right? So this is a pen available on Amazon, cost eight quid. It's got the Samsung logo, but it's called Samfung. <laughs> and it's a Chinese design, nonetheless, right? It's eight quid. It's got a rounded point that even if I don't put the nib out, so here it is with nib out, now it would definitely be point penetrative if it's going in. But even if I didn't put the point out, put the nib out, it's still going through you because it's not rounded or beveled enough not to. So this would be a point driven device. So this would be designed to strike soft tissue target, particularly the eyes, um, one of both eyes. So again, you're only looking to put in this much of the tool if you were to attack the eyes. You're looking at the you know, eye spike straight in and out to the eye or etch downwards. You know, in and down configuration. I'm not looking to put this through your brain, right into your ear hole, into the brain. But if I stab this hard down behind your um, clavicle bone into the subclavian, yes, it could indeed penetrate. It could indeed penetrate. Or if I did the same thing with a rounded marker pen or a pocket stick or a massage stick or a flashlight, I'm likely to break the clavicle bone and I'm likely to create um, a lot of pressure and pain on this area, this brachial plexus, which will disrupt your ability to move the arm, but it's not going to penetrate. So you've got point impactive strikes and you've got point penetrative, point driven strikes. So a point penetrative device would be something like a marker pen, a massage stick, a flashlight, a pocket stick by design, etc. That what we come up with. These are relatively low level use of force tools if you hit muscle groups. They are just going to be disruptive to mobility. If you hit bones, you're going to break bones. If you hit joints, you're going to break joints, damage joints. If you hit skull repeatedly, you're going to create depression and compound fractures, as I've said before, which can lead to um, coma and death, unconsciousness, coma and death. So you, they have the capacity, this has the capacity to be used right up to volume 10. Again, context it takes content. But in the main, if, I, if you grab me and I slam this on your hand, and I slam it into your collarbone and then boot you in the bollocks, there's a good chance that I've dealt with the situation without fucking you up too much. If, however, I choose to use point driven, point penetrative, such as a pen. So this would be a pen I recommend, right? And this is another one, pen that I recommend. This is made by Zebra Pens. Again, a solid piece of same stainless steel solid piece of stainless steel it's not two parts that join that can snap in the middle it's solid 
So you, know, you could shove this relatively hard and it would stay in a piece of plywood. So it's definitely going through your eye. It's definitely going through your neck. It's definitely going behind your collarbone into the um, subclavian area. So again, depending on target dependent, will depend on how much force you could implement. But yes, indeed, you could end somebody's life with a pen. And the point is, this is a pen. It's not a spike by design. It's not a spike built, purpose built weapon. It's not a knife. Although it will replicate the attributes of a small fixed pointed tool, such as this small fixed pointed blade, it's not a blade. So you could carry this in a non-permissive environment and you could use it in the jam pretty much the same way in which you use anything else. So point impactive would be pocket stick, massage stick, marker pen, flashlight. Point driven device would be something like a sturdy metal pen, six inch nail, screwdriver, etc. Right, that's going in. Just one tool that um, I want to show you so in the UK we have a, a store called Wix, which is like a B and Q type of place where you go and buy overly priced and expensive stuff to do up your house. But inside it has um, a product by Stanley. So Stanley are for, for make utility blades and various other tools. But Stanley make this little device here. This is four ninety nine, right? So as this comes right now, here closed like this with a pen clip, yeah? This is a pocket stick. This would be a point impactive device. So I could slam this into a muscle group and get a good effect. I could slam this into the metacarpals on the back of your hand. I could slam this into your eye socket and get a good effect. I could drop your blood pressure by slamming it into your side of your neck. And if I hit you repeatedly in the head for it, I'm gonna, I'm gonna crack your head and make dents, right? So, but it's point impactive, not point driven. Until, of course, I take off the lid. And if I take off the lid, now we've got a screwdriver. So this comes with a screwdriver and it changes with Phillips and flat, right? That's exactly what it is, it's a screwdriver. So if I had this in my hand, then reverse grip, again, easily concealed. This is going straight in your eyeball. This would go into the side of your neck and if I canted my wrist and ripped out, I'm gonna increase the damage. But nonetheless, the damage is gonna be minimal because the length is small and tiny. Obviously, if I hit a carotid artery, it's going to uh, bleed out under pressure and under volume. That's going to be a different thing. But if I hit you in the eye, if I score it down your face, I'm going to get a really, really good effect. So a screw, don't underestimate the power of a screwdriver. A screwdriver is a great tool. Now, you can't carry a screwdriver in the street or in a non-permissive environment and pass that off as, oh, it's just in my pocket because I've had it at work all day. You might, you might say that. You might say that, oh, you know, I was doing some work on my car earlier, doing the electrics, and yeah, it was in my pocket. And, you know, coincidentally, and luckily for me, when I ended up in this situation in the alley with three people that got a tool, I had a screwdriver. Now, anyone of normal mind would say, well, good, good on you, good job that you had it, and fair play that you used it to equal the disparity. But there's a good chance with the fucked up Commonwealth laws is that you get done for that, even though it's a screwdriver and it's not construed as a weapon by design. But this tool is, uh, although it's a screwdriver, it's very unassuming and not offensive looking. And if you add this in inside pocket with a pen and whatever else that you carry in everyday life, I mean, you probably pass it off. Like I said, if you had to use anything at all in a real sense, you'd have to articulate it to in the, in your defense to a court of law or to a police officer or jury of your peers as to why you did what you did. But if you had a device like this living in a Commonwealth country, or a device like this living in a Commonwealth country, then neither of these are purpose-built weapons. As opposed to this here, which is a small knife, yes, with a fixed blade, but nonetheless meets the criteria of a forbidden item to carry within a Commonwealth country. But this replicates a point-driven tool as does this, and as does this in its um, screwdriver formation, right? So understand the weapon profile and weapon attributes in such tools.